Hello and welcome, this is LCS Recap and this game comes with a spoiler warning. It's Lemon Dogs versus Gambit in the second semi-final. All the damage they got into Genji and Voidal, they were forced to recall and just allowed Tabs and Lily to chunk down. Alex caught by the gold card. We you see a knock up Dexter. Alex is trying oh. to turn around. Deathmark is not available. Force backwards. Ignite secures it. First blood for Lemon Dogs as Alex goes down. This is a slow, slow game. Neither team wants to aggress because of how much this match means. Diamond Brock sidestepped oh. away, gets a double knockup, turns the pressure on to Mithy as the bullet time comes across. Mithy drops to 300 HP, but he gets out cleanly. Four members of Gambit now want to pick up fight. Now Zoro Zero is going to be able to get popped by Alexic. He's managed to flash away. Ignite pops his passive cell divisions up. Alexic is going to look to pick up a kill with some of that splash damage that he does have. One single shadow slash secures it. First tower of the game in favor of Gambit. They're secured in the mid lane and they haven't stopped. They want to now jump on that mid in a turret. Oh. Alex Ish comes in for the hit and run. Very well as now Lemon Dogs. They're oh. trying to push middle. Mither's getting in. Pop. Deathmark takes him out. Now Voidal does get stunned by the gold card. They've traded support for support, but Strangle Thorns, no crescendo was used. I have to... Darian's unusual top lane Nasus has had the perfect game. Very little aggression, loads of time to farm, a rum and coke in one hand, listening to Coldplay. This is just how I imagine Darian lives his life. A couple of slashes down, does get taken out in the process. Gold card locks up Genji as the bullet time, not really doing the damage they wanted. Destiny's available, that's two kills for Zoro Zero, as now the gate does land. Crescendo locks up Nuketuck, Boyle gets a power cord down, flashes away from the knockup of Dexter. There's no more CC to follow up from the Lemon Dogs, and Gambit managed to get away with three. Diamond gets locked down next to Baron, and Lemon Dogs use their diving composition to get into Gambit's mid and back lines. All up in Gambit's face. Crescendo has not been used just yet. It finally locks up in Nuketuck and Zoro Zero in the background. The first victim to fall is Genja, followed quickly by Diamond Prox after coming back from that blood well. Ace in the hole, not going to be enough to close off Alex. And his death mark not really having an impact in this match oh. right now. Voidal does get taken down. A flag to the head. That's going to secure three kills. And Lemon Dogs will say thank you very much for Baron. And now but as Gambit struggled to take down kills, Darian has to rejoin the fight to provide backup. And trying to focus down those objectives from range. Zoro Zero thinks about jumping in, primes the slingshot, doesn't lock it down. Dexter does manage to get that Demacian standard and uh, Dragon Strike combo, not gonna land now. Oh God. You see Ace in the hole comes out, Diamond Brox is gonna go down. Let's bounce is there, but it's a pilt over Peacemaker that uses it. Alex decides to use the death mark on Zoro Zero. It does pop, not gonna be able to secure a kill yet, as the Strangle Thorns throws up three members of Gambit. Now we see that's two kills on the board for Tabs as he 90 calibers forward. Massive critical hit, secures him the triple kill, and we see Alex tries to go back in. The full kill of the fight does land in Nuketuck's back pocket, as we do see Genja has made it out cleanly. A four for one trade and Lemon Dogs may be on for the win. Because Zoro Zero went in on Diamond and didn't use his interrupts for Genja, they were able to at least get off a good bullet time there. Everyone paid for it with their lives, though, so it's only Genja by himself trying to save this one. First Nexus turret does drop, and in a 44-minute farm fest, yeah, Lemon Dogs are going to secure the first victory of the semi-final. A, a strong victory, one that was really thought about more than played for. That was how people talk about winning in picks. Not only did they win in picks, but they also won in-game with their itemization. All the action from game two began in the bot lane as Voidal's Thresh prepared the arena to duel with Miffy. Stranglethorn throws a Voidal into the air. This could be first blood. The living artillery secures it from a... Hey, that's cheating to pick that one up. They do trade supports, however, as Tab picks up the kill. The Condemned does not manage to come out, and Genja flashes away from the knockup. This action-packed teamfight is punctuated by a marvelous Stranglethorns from Mithy. Oh, here we go. Shockwave initiate. They pull Zoro Zero forward. He throws down Let's Bounce. Flash is available if he needs it. He continues to run away. The slow does land. Now that Darian's joined in, this is going to quickly become a three versus three. The, uh, Nuketuck decides to go onto Alexis. Deathmark is there. The damage will be popping. When Strangle Force throws up members of Gambit, and Darian is the only man that's knocked in the air. Cataclysm goes down. In the background, we did see Dragon secured there by Dexter's. Alex is still alive. Oh, take the, the shield keeps him alive. Oh. He picks up a kill. He's traded. Finally, Mithy picks him up. The kill's on the board. One down for Gambit, two down for Lemon Dogs, but Lemon Dogs got the drag. And if this doesn't make it onto the highlight reels, I don't know what will. Catches onto Tad. There goes the Strangle Thorns. Voidal is the target. Death Mark has not been used as the attack. Shockwave was used on Tabs. Barry is keeping him alive. Come on, attack in the distance. Is oh. it available? The ball doesn't reach. Tabs, 1v1's Alex. And a cat game surprise not going to be enough as Nuketuck secures two quick replies.
No gold lead from either team whatsoever at 23 minutes. Gambit go for a dive with the crocodile to force lemon dogs out of their turtle shells. Zoro Zero gets popped. Cell Division is there. All of the blobs sitting close together. And Darren is just going to get that area of effect damage down. He's ticking. He's going to be the next victim to fall as the blood well pops as well. Dark Flight manages to get Diamond up before Tab lands a critical hit and picks up a kill. One for two in this mid lane. And Lemon Dog's winning that fight. Lemon Dog's making engage, but Tabs is split pushing bot lane. Darren has been caught out. Zoro Zero dives himself in, doesn't get a knockup. Darren is the focus. Shockwave is good. Lots of people locked in the Cataclysm as the Strangle Thorns come down. They traded a top laner for a mid laner. As now Zoro Zero is the focus. Voidal forced to flash away. Dexter re engages, gets a double knockup, and here comes Zoro Zero. He pancakes Voidal into the ground. In before comes he comes thrown up into the air. Cell Division gets popped, as is Bloodwell. Tabs and Kenja are around. The question is who's going to do more work? Tabs manages to pick up one. Oh. Now Genja turns back onto Tabs. Living Artillery! Picks up the kill. Genja is chasing down Mithy. Living Artillery does not land. His mana pool is dropping. Not going to be enough to pick up a kill. Four for three. Still advantage Lemon Dog. But it's Lemon Dogs who are truly manipulating this game. All of Gambit's engages are regulated by Mithy and Dexter. Here comes Zoro Zero. He's bouncing in the Cataclysm. That is a great place for all that area of effect damage. Now in the background, Nuketak is going to destroy oh. Genja. Shockwave only really catching Dexter underneath the tower. Two members of Gambit are down for only the single member of Lemon Dogs. Zonya's Hourglass isn't going to be enough. Rooted in place, unstable matter. Zoro Zero does get out of it alive. That is a four for one exchange. This is going to be the inhibitor. When Darian uses Dominus, he has over 5,000 health, but has he got the damage to back up his engage? Here comes the Strangle Force. Alexic gets two shotted by Tabs. The first victim is going to be a rush, and is now the Lemon Dogs turning it on to Gambit. They've got three kills in the fight. They throw up the Crocodile. Four members of Gambit are down, and the Lemon Dogs have done it. Dexter is still alive. They're going to win this one. Boydell will have to do some magical work on Thresh here. Lemon Dogs are going to take down Gambit 2-0 in the semi-final match here. They finished the regular season in first place. They're going to take out the stalwart of season <laughs> two and this is something that nobody expected 66 percent of you thought that gambit were going to win it lemon dogs have two other gambits okay i'm a believer i understand now why lemon dogs is at the top of the eu dog pile Congratulations to Lemon Dogs for making it through to the World Finals and the final of the playoffs. We obviously will see Gambit in Season 4, though. And thank you very much for watching LCS Recap. My name is Ben Forbes. You will find the rest of the Gamescom games in the bottom left and the EU Regional Playoffs in the bottom right. Now for some spoiler-free video. Hi, it's Ben here again. Uh, I'm going to be talking a bit more freely, not so much scripted in this one. So um, this video is here, or this part of the video is here, if you don't know, to disguise the fact that the video is quite short so you'd be able to tell that it's a 2-0 you know by the by halfway in the video anyway i'm rambling i get a lot of questions asking what am i going to do after the lcs and that's a very good point uh there are obviously going to be tournaments running but i'd rather cover the tournaments that you guys are interested in so when lcs and the main competitive sort of scene is over what would you like to see more on lcs recap i mean People ask me quite a lot for OGN things, and uh, unfortunately, I can't cover OGN, any OGN content because they're, or the, sorry, the OGN is the Korean, um, the Korean League of Legends competitive scene. If you, uh, if you didn't know, and they, their terms and conditions restrict me from uploading anything from their content, and they have actually given strikes to YouTube channels, i.e punishments to YouTube channels, three strikes and your channel is, is deleted, it's banned. And I really don't want that to happen because I've accrued 7,000 of you who who want to see these videos more regularly, which is amazing. I had uh, I had no idea. Sorry, I'm turning this into a bit of a gush now. But thank you very much for subscribing. It does mean a lot. But yeah, what do you want to see on LCS Recap when LCS is over? Obviously, I am going to be covering Worlds, hopefully. We'll see if I can stay awake for that long because it is a lot of games um, and it's not in my time zone whatsoever. What I had thought of doing was, uh, before week 9, I produced a couple of videos called uh, What the NA Teams Need, or, or Who Needs What, um, and it sort of detailed the amount of games that, that people need to win uh, to stay in the top 6. And I'm thinking of doing more video features like that as opposed to recaps. I don't know if that's something you want to see. If you look at uh, Maximilian's channel, for example, that's the sort of thing I want to be when this channel stops having to focus on on LCS things because it, obviously they won't be on all year round. But anyway, the point of this video is just what do you want to see 
because I'm, I'm thinking about doing some more video features, something like that. But I'll keep recapping games. But just tell me which tournaments you want to see. Anyway, when they come around, let me know. Send me a message. I'll reply. Thank you very much for listening, and I'll see you next time.